What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another edition of the Everything College Basketball Podcast, episode 114. I'm, of course, Josh Burton, and joining me yet again tonight is my teammate, Phil Dexter. What is up, Phil? Hey, what's going on, man? Happy to be here, as always. Yeah, man. Enjoying your Friday night? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just had a little taco night with the girl. Um, Maybe some little, little margaritas after this, something like that. Oh, okay. I see how you're getting down tonight. We finally got some rain up here, but it wasn't enough to count. The grass is still dead as shit. I wish it was like that here. I got to get my ass up early and mow tomorrow. Uh, the worst part. Um, we got another special episode tonight, guys. Uh, if you listen back to our great episode from episode 113, we had Wake Forest super senior guard on with this, Davian Williamson. Great insight of his mentality going forward into his senior year looking to get in the tournament it's in the archives now go check that out it's a must listen episode good stuff from davian tonight we're joined by another special guest we'll get to him in just a second but as always we gotta put a special shout out to our title sponsor for ecb this season beauty to beast nutrition located in downtown edinburgh indiana if you are in edinburgh or around the central indiana area stop in Get yourself some healthy protein shakes, protein teas, all the good stuff for any type of diet. Tell them ECB sent you for 10% off your entire purchase. Again, Phil, you know how it is. We got to put the special shout out to Beauty to Beast Nutrition in Edinburgh, Indiana for being our title sponsors this year. Yes, sir. They've been awesome to us so far. Can't wait to get into the season with them. Um, Just really appreciate having them on board. Absolutely. But... You guys are here tonight. We are again live on the Facebook group, on the Twitter, and on the YouTube page. If you're with us, follow along as always in the chat. Leave those comments coming and we'll read them as they come along. But nonetheless, let's get to our special guest tonight. He is currently ranked number 61 in the Rivals Top 150 after making a huge jump this spring on the AAU circuit. We're joined by Rakis Passmore. Rakis, how are you tonight, my friend? Good, good. How about you? We're doing well, man. And I forgot to mention, too, I'd be remiss. He is in the class of 2024. Uh, Rakis, I, I, we've got a lot to talk about because normally we talk college basketball stuff, but you are going into your junior year of high school. But being that that jump that you made on Rivals when we were doing our research on you, you went from in March of this year on their site being unranked and you made this huge jump all the way to number 61. And according to rivals, you have offers now from Tennessee, um, Ole Miss, North Carolina state, et cetera, et cetera. Could you explain to the people what that feels like to take that type of jump and get that type of love from these high major D ones all of a sudden? Uh, feels good. They're working really hard for a little minute. Now it's starting to pay off. So I guess that's pretty good. Absolutely. Um, is there anything about this whole AAU process? Because we've covered it. We, You're on the Adidas circuit, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, we, Peyton and myself covered the event that was up in Indianapolis, where, if I'm not mistaken, you made the big jump that kind of grabbed people's attention. Being that, that four-star next to your name, that has to be a source of pride, I would imagine, right? Yeah, I've been waiting on that for a little minute. And it finally came, so that's glad (laughs) phil yeah man so i'm just sort of curious along those same lines you know your aau uh circuit experience you know you play with paul mcneil jr at garner road aau how's it been playing with another kind of highly rated guy in the same class just sort of that iron sharpens iron thing you know is that is that making you better um that competitiveness you know you guys going at each other in practice and all the time and stuff like that yeah it's great paul a great person good people and he really pushed me to the point we just be pushing each other on certain things so it's like we both learning from david west too so it's just all a learning experience yeah you mentioned david west former nba star played at xavier back in the day having a guy like that with that much knowledge and that much experience behind him what kind of lessons is he teaching you as you take your own journey through the four star, hopefully eventually the five star ranking and getting these major D one offers leading in the college. Uh basically just tell us all the time, make the right decisions, do that crazy. Just 
hang around the right people, do the right things, and you'll be you'll be good. Just always doing the right things. Don't do nothing crazy and stupid. Yeah, yeah, and it's got to be hard. I I always em, or uh, empathize with young folks like yourself now because when I was fortunate enough, Phil and I were both the, kind of the same age. We didn't really have social media to deal with. You guys have always yeah. got to be on your P's and Q's because you never know where a camera is going to be at or somebody's got a phone tweeting. How yeah. hard is that to control your emotions? Because if people have never seen you play, the one thing that stands out to us that we love so much is when you're on the floor, we like to say you're angry, but like a good anger. You dunk on somebody and you kind of give them that stare. How do you yeah. control your emotions, though, when things on the basketball floor get heated sometimes? Like you said, it's got to – you don't know who's watching, so keep your composure. And whoever keep their composure long is win, win the game, basically. So I just be, be chilling. I don't really do nothing crazy. Say nothing crazy. Well, and along the lines of your recruitment, Rockies, we're not really trying to break any news here or anything, but is there any, you know, school that you grew up dreaming of playing for? You know, you imagined yourself out in the driveway, something like that? Uh, I only started playing back. I started playing basketball at the end of seventh grade, so I really I was like kind of new to it. But like, dream school is Duke, Duke University. Just probably just want to get that one, but I want to see every other college too. To it all out there. Well, that's a, that's a great mentality. I mean, obviously, everybody who follows college basketball knows the lineage and legacy of Duke. Um, at this point, has there been any contacts between a school like Duke yet? Uh, not that I know of, but yeah, not that I know of, but I heard they picked up my, my number and stuff like that at the tournament. So I was like, I guess I stepped closer to it. Well, and, and that leads me into kind of my next thing. Historically, for whatever reason, blue bloods like Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, um, they tend to wait longer in the cycle to go after guys unless you end up being like the number one, two guy. But even then they like to wait longer in the cycle. Is this something when, as you move forward and really start thinking about where you're going to play your next level ball at in college, um, is that something that you'll weigh heavily? Meaning like, I don't know if you heard the story about Jabari Smith, where he just came out and did an interview. Jabari Smith just went to the NBA draft and they asked him why he picked Auburn with Kentucky was his dream school. And it's because Auburn believed in him early, stuck with him, and then Kentucky got in too late, but he valued the loyalty. Can you see yourself being something like that? Or if a school like Duke or Kentucky came calling, would you be more apt to listen to them? I like it's the loyalty part. That's that's big. Give it that stuck tragedy. So I'll probably do that. Like whoever really rock with me the hardest. Or think so I'll you be want my program. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, so you're looking for a, a program, a coaching staff that believes in you, values your talent, and wants to, as you said, rock with you the whole way. That trumps any, like, blue blood status. Yeah, it's loyalty part. Loyalty go big for me, so, yeah. Uh, you can't fault that. Um, a lot of people in college basketball make a lot of – off kilter decisions based on having no loyalty. So you cannot fault you for that. Phil, you got something else? Yeah, real quick. I just want to talk to you a little bit. We touched on it briefly at the beginning, but you know, you're moving to combine Academy this upcoming season for your high school career. Um, how are you feeling about that? As far as taking your game to the next level, is that sort of the reason behind that move trying to get somewhere again, that iron sharpens iron type of attitude, just be around uh, guys training all day. Yeah, it was, uh, I'd be around some good people like Silas. You know who Silas is? Four-star, Team Curry point guard. He, yeah, Silas Debray Jr. Uh, yeah. Played at Millbrook. Yeah, some other recruits at Combine. So I'll be getting better like every day, playing against those guys and stuff like that. And good coaching, Coach Mike Wright and A.J. Jones. is just, you know, learning, learning experience. Hey, for most people that watch and listen to us, aren't as blessed to have the talent that you have to get a rock on the AAU circuits, the shoe circuits, as they like to call them. Could you explain to our listeners what it's like on a weekend basis when you go to these events, one week you're in Indiana, the next you could be in Portland, the next, et cetera, et cetera. Could you kind of take everybody through the process of what an AAU um, event weekend is like? Uh, it's very intense. Very intense. You got to, Go to sleep early, wake up early, 
You got a whole weekend is tough. You, know, you got to get through it. You know, it's, do smart stuff. And are you, is your, are you guys done with the AAU circuit or do you still have more games? Uh, next week, we're going to be in Cali, California. So that'll probably be the last one. And when you, I'm sure just watching you on the floor, getting to know you a little bit, that we've got to know you, that you seem like an ultimate competitor. So when you step on the floor in these AAU events and you're, you know, across the floor from guys not only in your class, but, you know, four and five stars underneath and even above you, um, does that bring out the the most dog in you where you're like, all right, this guy's ranked top 10. I got to go out his throat to prove my worth. Yeah, it's just like, it's me versus you, and whoever get it, just get it. Like, <laughs> came, back, came back now from nobody. I mean, I love that mentality. Uh, we mentioned in episode 113, we had David Williamson, and he, he kind of a lot of the same way of putting the, the, the good vibes in the atmosphere, like I'm coming right at you. Um, we appreciate that. We mentioned earlier about you, you kind of have that that good angry about you. You know, your, your profile pictures, when they take pictures at you at these events, you're mean mugging and you're dunking on people and you're getting in people's faces. If you had to highlight one of your favorite dunk on somebody's head, if you could pick up the ones, what would your favorite dunk on somebody's head be? Uh, when I dunked on the center from Indiana Elite, that was like one of my best dunks that I got. Yeah, I, I already knew that was the one you were going to go with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely that one. Um. Rakis, we appreciate the time. So we got, we'll, uh, yeah, I think we got one more question a piece. Phil, if you got something, I'll let you go. Nah, man, it's all you. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, as I mentioned, though, Rakis, rounding this thing out, um, like I said, on Rivals, you're number 61. You went from the non rank and a huge jump to number 61. By the time that next year rolls around in the AAU circuit, you get through your junior year. As we all know that that last AAU cycle is the most important for a big time player as yourself. Are you looking to try to take that fifth star? And if so, what kind of um, advantages do you think you, that gives you going into your senior year with offer wise? Uh, It'll give me a lot more options to pick from the schools. Yeah. Get to see where I really can like go down to like college wise next level, but like right now I like, I, I appreciate the stars, but like ain't really too much. Like cause as soon as you get to college, it's all gone, and you got to start all the way back over. So that's pretty much. That's a very mature answer from you, and I really appreciate it. But I also like the 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 confidence level too. To be completely honest, I mean a lot of kids in your your. Um, your position would be like, oh, I'm a four star and maybe brag to people who have no stars. But I appreciate the level headedness. Um, the last thing I do want to ask, this came back up. I had it written down and I remembered it. So on Rivals, though, they do um, they have this thing called a future cast where these people that follow the recruiting trail really hard put in their picks. Most of the time, these guys are right. Sometimes they're wrong. On your future cast, as of a week ago, they have 100% to Tennessee. Now, again, we're not trying to break any news or anything like that, but is there something about Rick Barnes and the coaching staff that they've maybe reached out to you that you feel real good about, or are these people completely off base and just taking wild guesses? Uh, I don't even know, but I like Tennessee a lot. Though. Tennessee, they fun. Like It's fun out here. Yeah. I don't know if I'm – I just don't know yet. I got I got to see everywhere. Um, oh, that, that's absolutely. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're still going into your junior year. Like, I'm not telling you what to do, but if I was you, I would make sure I take all my visits, go get the, <laughs> go, go see the campuses, go see what they got to offer. And yeah, take your time, man. But I was just thought it was curious because again, a hundred percent and you're just like, you keep rising up the ranks kind of didn't know if they were guessing or maybe there was something special you liked about Rick Barnes and company that uh, stood out to you, but it does sound like you like it over there in ball country. Yeah. But that, that well, is a crazy guess though. hundred <laughs> percent. I know, man. I know. Um, it's like, they're trying to read your mind. That's why we were asking, but Rakis, we appreciate your time tonight, man. I know you got a lot going on. It, school about to start back up for you guys here in the next few weeks. Uh, yeah. August 15th. While I go down. 
it just keeps getting quicker and quicker, man. Right. We, we hear from the older generation that they used to not go back to school till after Labor Day. Now it's starting <laughs> at the beginning of August. It's crazy, man. You guys get no you, – I mean, you, you're in AAU, so you really get no break. But yeah. – uh, Rakis, we appreciate your time, my friend. We will keep a very close eye on you. Like I said, you've already shot up to number 61 in the rival top 150 recruiting rankings for the class of 2024. You've got a wealth of talent. After getting to spend some time with you, we love your mentality, and we will continue to watch your journey until you make it to the point that you want to go. Um, you have an open invite. We will track you throughout your high school uh, season this junior year. Best of luck then. We will, like I said, keep in touch with you. Before you get out of here, is there any of your socials or anything you want to plug coming up? Uh, like shout out my social or somewhere? Social yeah, media? yeah. Yeah, where people where our uh, people can go follow you at, because I'm sure, uh, yeah, you guys got to get them followers up. Come on, y'all can uh, follow me on Instagram, uh, NBA Okay, all right. all right. Well, Rakis, again, we appreciate you, my man. Best of luck this season. The rest of the AAU journey, we will keep in touch and hopefully can have you back on throughout the year and talk about how everything's going and keep everybody updated as you make that journey toward your fifth star. Yes, sir. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you for having yeah, me on. Appreciate the time. More, more than you, our man. pleasure. Best of luck, Rakis. There you guys have it. 2024 four star guard, Rakis Passmore. Um, about what I expected. Very, I loved his, um, his humbleness, though. Yeah, no, I was really surprised, or I shouldn't say surprised, actually, but like you said, just the fact that he's so mature to already be saying, you know what, these stars aren't going to matter. I'm already thinking about the next level and how I'm going to handle that. Like that's, that's a step ahead of where a lot of kids are at, at that stage. Yeah. And I was trying to get it, not like a gotcha. Cause you know, we never do that, but I meant more like when I kept telling you like, man, like, you know, dunking on somebody that angry style, that's that good angry. I was trying to get him to crack a smile, maybe make a little joke, but <laughs> he wasn't falling for it. He's well trained. I mean, how about having David West as one of your mentor coaches? Absolutely. I mean, we mentioned he has a great teammate in Paul McNeil Jr. And then you got David West there and Garner Road AAU is just, you know, kind of a historic AAU program in this area, you know, where I'm from in Raleigh, um, tons of alumni from the NBA. So I'm sure he's just, he's has you know, access to a lot of great advice, uh, a lot of good people around him um, going to combine Academy next season. He's going to have even more of that around him. I mean, he is a kid who's really setting himself up for success going forward. I, I mean, he, like we mentioned, in three months' time, he went from not rated on the rivals' top 150 to number 61 in three months. Yeah, and if you haven't checked him out, go just search his name on YouTube. We'll have his name here in the title and all that good stuff. And just watch this kid just yamming on people just repeatedly. I mean, he's got five or six. But, like, I knew when you asked him that question about the dunk, which one he was going to say. He got <laughs> this kid from in the elite. And I mean, it was like an NBA level Vince Carter style dunk. I mean, it was literally, it was that good. I, it was getting shared by like, you know, the, the big basketball websites. Yeah, I was, and I was wanting that. It's, you always think it's stuff later. And I was wanting to ask him who, if he, anybody he models his game after to see if maybe we got like a Vince Carter or somebody crazy like that. Yeah, I can see that. And the thing with him is it's you have to still project if he's going to grow or not because he is, you know, only 16 years old. He's still got two years left to high school. So it's like that style of play can still change so much between now and the time he heads off to college. No, absolutely. I mean, like you mentioned, continue to fill your body out, get in the weight room. Now your range increases. Um, the stronger that you get, your handles get a little better. You're better defensively. Um, and and he, like you mentioned, he's only, what, like 16 going into his junior year, 16, 17, and he's already 6'6". Six, six. I mean, that's a lot growing to do potentially left. Absolutely. I mean, if he doesn't grow at all, he's still a guard slash wing. And if he does, he's all of a sudden this, you know, 6'8", six, 6'9", six, kid that has the skills to maybe, you know, put the ball on the floor and create for others. And and that kind of height and length is only going to help him if, if he's still trying to, you know, dunk on dudes. Yeah, um, did you like the Duke answer he gave? Yeah, yeah, and that that doesn't surprise me. I feel like, you know, he's kind of of that era of kids who, you know, probably one of his first memories of 
national champions is that you know Jaleel Okafor national title team. He's uh, that's a good call. Kentucky is probably still right in that range too, where yeah, those those first titles he remembers. So the Duke thing didn't really surprise me, um, but it also speaks to probably a little bit. I mean, he didn't mention you know that he would be in love or he would instantly commit or anything like that. But you know, it sounds like John Shire still holds some cachet and Duke still holds, you know, some cachet. That's why I'm, I was so excited to do this interview because we have a current, not a former, but a current kid that is being heavily recruited and as his ranking goes up. And eventually I'd imagine he will get that five-star status trying to get a, a little sneak peek of what the recruiting process is like. And to mention Duke like that, where he even mentioned kind of that they're asked for a number from him. Um, so it sounds like Duke might be getting involved or at least some starting to inquire about it. The two things from that interview and Rakis, you know, sh sort of shy, but great mature answers. He, a, a fabulous player. The two things that stood out to me is the fact that he wants to be loyal. So the schools now like Tennessee, North Carolina state, um, Western Carolina, Ole Miss, et cetera, et cetera. That's all kind of offered him or in on him a wake forest, um, it sounds like if they really show some love to him now that they might be able to take off eventually once he gets his fifth star, they might be able to snag him a, a quality five-star kid just by being loyal to the soil to him early on. Absolutely. And honestly, the thing that stood out to me is, you know, just something that goes to his mentality. And it was kind of some of the questions that I asked, but we've talked about somebody like Imani Bates who during his high school career shied away from playing with other great players, playing against other great players. Rakis is clearly not doing that. He's, he plays with another great player at Garner road AAU. He's transferring to combine Academy where there are other great players. Like he's confident enough in his talent and how that's going to show through and, and how he's going to be able to improve being around these other great players that, you know, I just think that's a really impressive mentality because a lot of kids at that age, again, are just so protective of not wanting to ever look bad, you know, always got to be the best player on the court. And, and there's a lot that can be gained from playing with and against the best guys in the country. Well, to quote him from his own mouth talking to us, he said, when we asked him about that competition across the board, he said, whoever wants it can get it. He's not afraid. And you got to respect the kid like that, especially like you mentioned, being so young not shying away from competition, both on his team and going at competition. Well, and some people, you know, they laugh about people talking about that dog mentality and stuff like that, but you cannot teach that. I mean, again, that's something that is at 16 years old is already ingrained in this kid that, you know, he's not going to back down from anybody. He's going to go after everybody. And if you have that, I mean, even if you don't necessarily have the same level of skills or, you know, athleticism or whatever, which, you know, he has as much athleticism as anybody. I'm not saying that, but if you have that mentality, it can truly take you to that next level. Oh, no, absolutely. And before we wind this up, the one other thing that kind of stood out to me when we were asking him about the Tennessee future cast prediction, is it me or does he seem, I mean, he even kind of said he loves it up there. To me, if you did have to pick a favorite right now, I, I would say Tennessee's in a pretty good spot. Yeah, no, I think Tennessee, you would have to say, is the favorite. Um, it sounded to me like he is trying to, you know, stay a little bit tight-lipped at the moment. And, you know, you mentioned that he still has a lot of, you know, rising to do with his ranking. And so I still think there's a lot of room for some schools to get involved. So I imagine, you know, he'll keep his options open as long as humanly possible. Um, but it clearly seemed like Tennessee's the favorite. And I mean, can you blame him? Rick Barnes, absolutely great coach. Got guys going to the NBA pretty much every year. I mean, you couldn't really choose a better spot for him. Well, and think of the culture. I mean, we're talking about toughness, maturity in this kid, the dog in him. Is there really a better spot to go play than for Rick Barnes, who's going to demand that you have all those qualities to play for his volunteer club? Absolutely. And, you know, I just thought of something. Uh, I wish I had mentioned it when, when we were interviewing him, but another Rick Barnes, you could say protege, alumni, whatever, PJ Tucker, I mm. believe is a Garner Road AAU alumni as well. Oh, okay. Good so call. I, I wonder if PJ Tucker, you know, has been in his ear a little bit through the grapevine, anything like that, just letting them know how good of a dude, you know, Rick Barnes is. Um, yeah, that, that wouldn't surprise me at all. 
Yeah, no, that's that's a great point. So we'll have to keep an eye out our Tennessee fans out there. We're not calling it by any means because he even mentioned himself. There's a long way to go, as he should be. He should not be making a commitment right now. Go get that fifth star. Wait until after your last AAU session before you even narrow your list down, in my opinion. And I think he's smart enough to do that. But I do feel that he's going to continue to rise up the ranks. You will see the Dukes, Kentuckys of the world, Louisville, get in on him, and it's going to go down to the wire. But if you're Tennessee Volunteer fans, I feel like you're in a good spot right now. But what a great kid he is. Hopefully, you know, we'll be able to get him back sometimes during during the season and talk to him through his high school season. I definitely feel he'll be back, though, uh, again on the show as a recurring guest. And it's crazy, man. We just talked to one of the best prospects in the class of 2024. I mean, have you? that's crazy, right? I know. It's always nice. We were sort of talking about it with Davion Williamson yesterday. It's cool to talk to somebody that you know you're going to be watching down the road. And uh, with Rakis, I have no doubt that we're going to be seeing him at the uh, at the college level in prime time come 2024. Absolutely. So again, shout out to our, our special guest tonight, four-star guard in the class of 2024, Rakis Passmore, shooting up the recruiting rankings week by week, month by month. Look for him to make a huge jump between now and the end of next season, the start of the AAU season. See if he can't eventually crack that top 25 and get five-star status. So again, Rakis, thank you. Um, Special thanks again to our title sponsor this year, Beauty to Beast Nutrition, located in Edinburgh, Indiana. Stop in, tell them ECB sent you for 10% off your entire purchase. But for wrapping up episode or things in episode 114, and guys, I hope you've enjoyed the last couple episodes with the interviews because I promise you, without revealing too much, like Phil said in the last episode, we've got a lot more on the docket for you this summer. Big time stuff coming at you from ECB. Hold on tight because it is going to be a lot of stuff that's going to knock you back that I think you guys are going to enjoy. But wrapping up episode 114 for Phil and Peyton, who's not on with us right now, I'm Josh. We hope you guys enjoyed it. And until episode 115, we hope you guys stay safe and have a good evening.